Hey everybody, welcome back to Colony Drop, your favorite Gundam podcast. My name is Isaac. And my name is Brian, and this is a podcast where we talk about anything and everything related to the Mobile Suit Gundam franchise. From the anime, to the movies, to the models, to the manga. And what are we talking about today, Isaac? Today we're talking about something very special, very near and dear, close to your heart. (laughs) Today we're talking about five ideas for mobile fighters, which, as you recall, are the national-themed Gundams from Mobile Fighter G Gundam. That's right. Isaac hates G Gundam. I love G Gundam. (laughs) (laughs) Let me defend myself a little bit. Okay, I don't hate G Gundam. It's just not my favorite, all right? I'm a bit more into Gundam when it's about, like, you know, feuding factions and, you know, actual battles and stuff like this. This is very much a Gundam that doesn't really take itself seriously. So it's, yeah, yeah, it's Street Fighter Gundam. (laughs) That's right. And for those of you who haven't seen G Gundam, uh, it's a show from the mid-90s. I think it's 1994, if I remember right. Uh, and the basic idea is that the world government is controlled by sort of one country, which gets determined every four years or so, uh, based on a tournament called the Gundam Fight. And it's that Gundam Fight is basically like the Olympics, but instead of sending an athlete, uh, your country sends a, a Gundam to fight on its behalf. And that con- and the country that wins the tournament gets to sort of control the world for the next four or uh, however many years it is. And so today, Isaac and I are going to present our own ideas for some new mobile fighters. That's right. Let me let me just remind our viewers that the reason <laughs> in Mobile Fighter G Gundam they have this whole tournament anyways is because they originally had a, a world war of such devastating scope that the world was essentially ruined afterwards. So they each country sent their own colonies into space. You know, Neo America, it was the colony for America, you know, Neo Neo Japan is the colony for Japan, etc. And this is how they solve their differences. So I guess in a way, this is how they're having their wars. It's just a much more um, scaled down version that will avoid a world war itself. Brian, did you, did you come up with five or did you come up with any more than five, less than five? Uh, I have one honorable mention. Um, there were ones I wanted to come up with something for, but I, I just couldn't. Um, so I, like, I wanted to come up with something for Australia. So I was like, maybe it's something to do with like a kangaroo. Uh, but it turns out there's already a mobile fighter from Neo-Australia called Jumping Gundam uh, from one of the G Gundam mangas. I think it might be one of the prequel mangas. Uh, it's basically a kangaroo with boxing gloves, kind of exactly what you'd imagine. So that, so that was already taken. It's kind of like the first stereotype or, or trope, I guess, you would go to um, for Australia. So, uh, you know, what was uh, what was one of your honorable mentions? I actually have three. I'd like to talk about them at the end if that's okay. Yeah, sure. Okay. And I didn't think of my Gundams in a particular order. Like, there's five, and it was just as the ideas came to me. Did you put yours in, like, boring to awesome, your usual <laughs> scale? Uh, I didn't think of them in any particular order. I, I don't know. I like to have a standard, I guess, for my ideas. And I had four uh, that I thought were pretty good, and I guess one that I sort of thought of at the last minute. So I'll probably start with that one. Um, but the other four, I'm not really sure which ones are the best, but I'll try to i guess put them in in order from boring to to awesome to be uh consistent with previous podcasts (laughs) all right brian in that case let's start off with yourself what is your first submitted mobile fighter concept okay so this is to answer the question we asked before which is what would the vatican send out as a mobile fighter and so I guess I should let me let me preface all my picks with when I went international, I tried to base my picks on like personal experience in these countries. And so I've taken two to three big sort of international trips in my life. And one was a, a big European backpacking trip through 11 countries in 30 days, which if you've never been backpacking before, I highly recommend it. It's great fun. And so my, my European things are going to be based on stuff I saw when I was over there. So one of the things that I saw uh, at the Vatican were the Swiss guards. Do you know who the Swiss guards are, Isaac? Of course. They are these, dare I say, flamboyantly dressed ceremonial guards that protect Vatican City. They do. That's right. They protect the Pope. And they have these elaborate, like, poofy blue and orange vertically striped uniforms that have this white neck frill thing and this helmet that's that's also very elaborate. And it's either, like, silver or black. And the helmet has this big, floofy... uh, I don't know, there's probably a real word for this, but it's not a feather. 
but it's like the, the big floofy thing that goes on the top. We'll really? call it a crest. The crest, yes. Okay, so it, it's the crest looks like it's normally red, uh, but there's I think there's some others that are maybe black or yellow. Maybe they're more ceremonial or something. Um, so I'm thinking this would be a great army builder Gundam. Like maybe there's a lot of them, and I don't know. Perhaps they protect the a, a Pope Gundam or something. And I, I just think it would be such a good army builder because it's not forgettable like a lot of the other army builder suits. Like the Leo, for example. We rag on the Leo all the time because it's boring as hell. But if you had an army of Swiss Guard looking Gundams, I think that would at least be memorable. You know, so make the Gundam look kind of like a Swiss Guard, give it some poofy armor, um, you know, blue and orange stripes going on. I think it would really work. You know, put the little headpiece on with the crest. Uh, for weaponry, I think you have to give it like the the standard Swiss Guard uh, halberd, and the, the halberd, I guess, it's, it's, I guess it's like a an axe, but also a spear at the same time. Is that a fair? Um... It, it's what you'd call a pole axe. One thing I thought when I was coming up with these is, I guess I didn't really want a whole lot of like beam weapons, but I mean, I guess you could do like a beam halberd if you wanted, but like a physical one, I think would be good, good too. Definitely also... a heat halberd. Ooh, a heat halberd. Yeah, that's that, let's go with the heat halberd for sure. And then, yeah, a lot of times today, I think the Swiss Guard is mostly like ceremonial. So I think they do some like marching and parading or whatever it is. Um, so you know, they, I think they played like drums and stuff. So I think a cool like a a drum with like a sound wave attack would be fun. And then the the Swiss Guards do carry guns, I believe. And so if you think about like the halberd and the drum, those are very traditional, like like not modern. But if they're gonna have guns. I figure they have to have like the finest assault rifles because in the Catholic Church is, is basically like you know one of the richest institutions on the planet. That's pretty cool. Well, I think I have to take this opportunity to jump in and jump down on my list because oh. one of one of my choices was also Vatican City because <laughs> we talked about it in a previous episode. I think we mentioned like what offhand we were like, what would the Vatican like? What would the Vatican actually send? That's right. Turn them. <laughs> That's right. So I went with a bit, a bit obvious of a choice. I went with Pope Gundam, maybe oh, Papal perfect. Gundam. <laughs> perfect. They pair and, up nice. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Now it's a Gundam. It probably has like the Pope hat. You know, it fights with a long cross staff. And <laughs> I thought it'd be cool if it had like floating Bible bits. Ooh. Like they look like giant Bibles and they fly around. You know, they can shoot beams or something. I also thought it'd be cool if he had like maybe. I, I put beam robes of gold and white, you know, the kind of very flowy, you know, because you can't really do that with armor, but with like beams, you're, you can be a bit more flowy, you know, like Master Asia style kind of stuff. Yeah, I'm I'm picturing the Crossbone Vanguard uh, beam flags. Yeah, pretty much, exactly. Yeah, and I thought it'd be cool if it goes into something called Cardinal mode, where it turns like blood red and like Zerker like Crusade kind of attack thing. Ooh, yeah, that'd be cool. I like that. Yeah, I mean, you know, like you, kind of like the Catholic Church, right? We're like, okay, what they, what do they do? Like they, you know, they, they have soup kitchens and they like run, you know, private schools. That's kind of it. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And then like, and then like, you kind of like, well, if you kind of like read the history books, there's, there's a much more, you know, militant <laughs> force underneath the surface. So that's kind of what cardinal mode is. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. I like that. And well, I'm glad we got the the Vatican covered. So for all those who are wondering, now you know. The Pope Gundam comes out with his his army of Swiss Guard Gundams. Swiss Guard Gundams. <laughs> um, okay, so I guess next on my list from boring to wow is probably... Uh, let's go with one of the obvious ones. So one of my favorite places in Europe was Ireland. And so here we're going to get the Leprechaun Gundam. Oh my Lucky. god. <laughs> uh, AKA a- a- the Lucky Gundam. So it, it's clearly themed after a leprechaun. Uh, you know, I definitely want a big, oversized, fluffy leprechaun hat. Uh, the overall color scheme would be a nice, like, Irish green. And, you know, I mean, if anyone's ever been to Ireland, it, it's very green over there, right? You'll you'll get off the plane and you'll be like, wow, they, they weren't lying. It is extremely green, like, everywhere. <laughs> um, and, you know, I guess you don't have to have, like, the full coat and, like, high socks and everything like that on, on the Gundam. But you definitely have to have the green, the hat. And probably like the big uh, belt buckle uh, at, the, at the very least. Uh, I would say it's probably smaller than most of the other Gundams in the tournament. I'm basically thinking like it would be the size of the F91 relative to like an RX78, um, or you know, or, like the rest of the cast. Yeah. 
<laughs> that was my first question. I was like, is this actually going to be like a stunted Gundam or something? Like it's <laughs> li- like that Notre Dame fighting Irish <laughs> like symbol where it's got like a massive head. It's almost SD in proportions. <laughs> yeah, you definitely have to play with the proportions a little bit. I mean, you probably don't want them to be too too extreme, but I do think you want the hat to be pretty big because I feel like it has to have a f- like a fun atmosphere to it because leprechauns are supposed to be uh tricksters according to like folklore so if you, with the hat the the sort of diminutive stature uh the different proportions um another thing that would be important to have is it would have to have the ability to turn invisible uh, so that it can pull tricks on other gundams and that would give the uh, the illusion of magic so this is kind of like the bible bits um if we're trying to like force this ability into like a the science of, of, of the gundam universe right 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 so i think if it could turn invisible the leprechaun gonna could hide and you know you're always trying to find leprechauns right I and mean, that's their whole thing is they're they're hidden cloaking device <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly and uh so i think the leprechaun gundam or the lucky gundam uh shouldn't actually actively participate in the gundam fight um i think here ireland would be acting as like a trickster in the tournament you know sabotaging other matches or maybe uh, swaying matches in Ireland's favor. Uh, maybe they want like an ally to win, or, or maybe they don't want a certain country to win. Because you know Ireland probably doesn't think that they can win the whole tournament with Leprechaun Gundam, right? So this would be the most effective way to to deploy it. That's pretty weapon. brilliant. Yeah, yeah. I mean, because you know, is Ireland really is the Leprechaun Gundam really going to win against the Burning Gundam? Like, I I just don't see that happening. So this would be their their like next best option, you know. For weapons, it definitely needs a shillelagh, which is basically like a, like a wooden club. It's kind of like a walking stick with like a, a knotted end. I don't know. How, how would you describe it, a shillelagh, Isaac? Yeah, it's... <laughs> I guess you could say it's a a, a bludgeon-type weapon. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, picture like a like a hobbit's walking stick, and that, that's kind of like a shillelagh. But designed uh, to then... bash your skull. <laughs> <laughs> and then leprechauns are also supposedly uh, shoemakers according to folklore so I, I think it should have a small mallet that it could you know like hammer people with but then i'm thinking when the leprechaun gundam goes into its own version of cardinal mode or, or whatever whenever it goes all out that small mallet could get really big uh, like a really like a really big cartoonish mallet you know to really do some hammering and then the other thing i was thinking about is you, you have to work shamrocks in there somehow so you mentioned a long time ago uh, monster rancher and in that show, there was one of the main character monsters had an attack called Cherry Blossom Blizzard, where basically all these cherry blossoms came and whirlwinded through the, the enemies. So I think we need that, but we need like the Shamrock version, right? So the Shamrock uh, t- Tornado or the Shamrock Whirlwind, where a whole bunch of Shamrocks just kick up and, and kind of s- slice the enemy or something like that. Wow. Yep. So that's it. I- Ireland's entry is the, the trickster leprechaun lucky gundam i like it i like the dynamic where like they know they're not gonna win they know maybe technologically they're not really on the same scale as like the more powerful countries so they're like well we're just clearly gonna bend the odds in favor of whatever you know country we negotiate a good alliance with (laughs) yeah i mean i just don't see the leprechaun gundam winning one-on-one against like the pope gundam over here who's going into uh you know cardinal mode i mean i just that's just not gonna happen right maybe you're right maybe you're right i don't know all right i'm gonna let's see i'll go up my list since i started at the bottom with vatican city gun or the vet yeah the vatican city all right my next one is let me preface this by saying yes i know it's not a country but in my head canon it becomes a country again say it with me now this is volcano gundam from the restored kingdom of hawaii Ooh, I, I like that. Okay, so for whatever happens in the future, Hawaii, you know, I don't know. Things are bad. <laughs> so <laughs> somehow they're able to become a kingdom again. <laughs> well, okay, we, we could put a story to that. I mean, maybe like you said, Earth is all effed up in the in the future century. And maybe when Neo-America left, they left Hawaii for dead because they thought, okay, they're under ash or, or something. Uh, and then they figured we'll just, you know, take off without them. Um, but then after they left, I, you know, maybe Hawaii just rebuilt and, and kind of became its own independent kingdom again. Yeah, I mean, things are bad enough, and whatever happened after uh, the war that they decided to head into space. So Hawaii became independent again, became their own kingdom. The <laughs> Volcano Gundam is their entry into the tournament. 
So Volcano Gundam, obviously, because what is Hawaii? It's a chain of volcanic islands. But this Gundam, it fights with magma and also lava. It does those, you know, typical attacks. But since, you know, Hawaii is volcanic islands, it's really good in underwater, too. So it does amphibious attacks, too. Oh, okay. So it could, it could use that strategy where it pulls opponents underwater. People usually have a hard time with that. Right. I also thought it'd be good that, like, we actually have a something that's not sort of in their usual rock, paper, scissors type fighting, right? You get, like, something fire-based or something, and then they always defeat it with water. You get yeah. something water-based, and they always, like, defeat it with heat or something, right? Or electricity, yeah. whatever. But anyways, well, that's almost too Pokemon-y. But anyways... <laughs> You see my point. And yes. I thought it'd be cool if it has like a surfboard and it's like its look is that it has Polynesian tattoos and weapons. And maybe before combat, it does like a, a haka or it or when it's victorious, it does a haka. I love hakas. Hakas are great. I had a coworker who was super into hakas. He'd go to Hawaii like once a year and every time he'd go, he'd get another big Hawaiian tattoo. So his, his haka got progressively more authentic. <laughs> is he Polynesian or Hawaiian? No, he was Filipino. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. He just really liked Hawaii. I don't know. Sure. <laughs> Why not? But yeah, like what I like about the the surfboard is it could be a shield. It could like get on top of it and hover around. You know, it's just it's it's so interesting. <laughs> so many so options. Does it, does it generate the magma from within or does it like pull it out of the ground? That's a good question. I think it'd be cool if it generated it from within. You know, that way it's kind of on demand. Maybe sort of like how the guff had like its, you know, finger kind of attacks things. It's able to sort of spray out magma. I like it. I mean, that seems pretty deadly. I feel like that one's that one's going places for sure. Uh, <laughs> what's, what's your next one, Brian? So I cheated a little bit. I actually have two different ones for the United States. Oh, so, you redid the United States? I redid what? the United States, yes. You had issues with Maxter? <laughs> Yeah, so we'll do one of them now. Yeah, I was never impressed with with Gundam Maxter. I just don't get it. For whatever reason, there was a big focus on boxing. And football. (laughs) Yeah, football, I guess I could see. And it had, like, the boxing mode. I don't know. I don't get it. One of the prequel mangas has another one. Uh, I think it's called Freedom Gundam or Gundam Freedom, maybe. And that one has more of, like, a cop aesthetic. Which, actually, uh, given everything in the news lately, may be fairly appropriate for the United States. But but that one, I'm still not really super impressed with that one. It's got some, like, brass knuckles with some spikes on it. And again, it has a boxing mode. Again, with the boxing. Don't get it. So I'm redoing the USA twice. Wow. The first is in a heroic manner. So if you were doing a story where the U.S. Gundam was the protagonist, this would be my Gundam. So I'm going to call it either Revolution Gundam or Gundam 1776. And I basically want it to look like George Washington in his tri-corner hat. You know, with the with the blue coat and the, the white pants and the tall boots and the sort of cape-looking thing that you see in some of those famous paintings. Like there's the one where he's in the boat on the river. And it, it's, it's like a cloak or a cape or like a... It's not really a shawl. I don't, I don't, know, what, I don't know what to call it. Hatches. We will call it a cloak. Yeah, I mean, it's a cloak. So you get the cloak look going which is always really good for example crossbone gundam has a cloak and every, you know, everybody loves that so i think if you put that on on our gundam that'd be super sweet uh for weapons it would have to have a musket probably like a beam musket it could also have flintlock pistols probably two of them tucked into the belt you know crossways so you get the dual wielding flintlock pistols going on wow it's got to have a cavalry saber and i think i would want the cavalry saber to be physical uh may- maybe a heat saber that, that could work too. I guess if it was a beam saber though, I would want it to be like the curved one, kind of like the new Gundam has. Like not, I don't want just like a straight one, right? That doesn't look like a cavalry saber. That'd be cool. And then, stay with me here. If he's got a cavalry saber, that means he has to have a horse. <laughs> so, you give him a war horse, kind of like Foon Psyche. But, but, this horse can also transform into a revolutionary war cannon. You know, the one with the, the big wheels, with the big spokes? Of course. That's like his ultimate attack, you know, like after everything's used up or he's in a, a bad situation. So yeah, that's my Gundam 1776. That would be my hero protagonist for the United States in, a, in the Gundam fight. Yeah, kind of like a continental soldier look kind of thing. I like it. 
what is i assume the dark america <laughs> oh well that's i think that's my best idea so i think i'm gonna say that for last but i will say i think you're either gonna love it or you're gonna hate it brace yourself <laughs> listeners <laughs> we could get political quickly <laughs> all right what do you got next on the list my next one i'm representing neo antarctica now when I was thinking of this, I thought, well, multiple countries kind of claim parts of Antarctica, right? And mm-hmm. it, there's there's just essentially scientists on there. Nobody lives there, of course. There's, you know, penguins. That's about it. So I thought to myself, well, what what do we know about Antarctica? Well, it's the coldest place in the world. And I was like, that might actually be cool for an attack. So I thought, well, how do we know it's the coldest place in the world? Because a place called Vostok Station determined that it reached negative 89.6 degrees celsius so i said that's a cool name we will call this volstock gundam from neo antarctica and it represents their community of of scientists that decided to become a country so it has the ability to combat lower temperatures to negative 89.6 degrees celsius which i am assuming most every other country didn't see coming (laughs) <laughs> so that had, has to do some some crazy things to their their engineering and like their power systems, I imagine. And the bits that it uses in combat, they look like little penguins. <laughs> <laughs> little little penguin drones are terrifying. Yeah, I'm and getting... <laughs> visually, I imagine it would look like something that scientists had designed. Not a lot of you know national looking representation in it because it's Antarctica. It would be essentially look plain white almost and bare to the point of being unsettling. Oh, yeah, that is pretty disturbing, actually. Yeah, I mean, I can just imagine, like, Domon fighting it, and then, like, you know, his, you know, first he starts noticing, like, he can see his breath in his cockpit, and then, like, Mm -hmm. from there he starts seeing, like, you know, his mobile suit's moving slower, and things around them are starting to freeze, and then... Oh boy, you know, his generator's like really having the problems trying to stay warm and all that. Yeah, I like that. I mean, Neo Antarctica, th- yeah, they deserve some some say in the tournament for sure. Yeah, they made their own country. Hawaii did too. So in, in my timeline, a lot of things, <laughs> yeah, new countries showed up and old countries came back. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like in your timeline, everyone who got left behind is really coming back for revenge here. I don't know if it's so much that got left behind, but just a lot of bad things had to happen in the world for so much of the population to go into space. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, does it wear like a like a scientist cloak, like a like a lab coat, perhaps? Maybe, or it, it just I don't know. Maybe it's just so so barrenly purely white, like Antarctica. There's just it's just all smooth sides, kind of like. I don't know if you, the Sentinels from X Men: Days of Future Past, something akin to that, but like with a gun and face, too alien looking, just like Antarctica, such an alien looking continent. Yeah, I guess for those who don't know what Isaac's talking about, there are some Sentinels in the X Men comics from the future. One of the main ones being Nimrod, and he does have like very smooth, like a very smooth surface, like all of his limbs and his body. Yeah. Also, well, I also kind of meant like the, the movie Days of Future Past. Oh, okay. They were very uh, sort of slender humanoid, smooth looking no. things in the future. Obviously. Got it. Okay. Brian, what's your next entry? So my next entry is for Neo Scotland, and I call this the Highlander Gundam. <laughs> <laughs> so you, can t- you can probably already tell where we're going with this. You, you cannot to- die, McLeod. <laughs> So you want him to kind of look like a Highland warrior, basically. So that means he has to have the tartan pattern uh, kilt and the thing that goes across the tunic. Um, It's kind of like a sash, I guess, but I don't know. It's my understanding that it's like all one thing. I don't really know what it's called. And I guess I should say that the tartan pattern is like the Scottish plaid, uh, which is the pattern for the different clans. And then, of course, you would also need a big fur coat because, you know, it gets pretty cold up there in the Highlands. And for weapons, they would definitely have to have like a broadsword, like a claymore, which is pretty standard for those Scottish Celtic warrior types. And that's another weapon I think I would want a physical uh, sword for. I don't think I want a beam claymore. I think I really want that physicality that we saw in, in like Iron-Blooded Orphans of just this big, heavy claymore like cleaving other Gundams in half, you know, which would be awesome. For beam weapons, though, I'm thinking he could have like beam bagpipes that he could play and he would shoot out beams. Uh, that would really play into the gimmick and I think it would also be hilarious. I mean, beam bagpipes, come on. 
And by the way, when I did when I was in Scotland, I did see people playing bagpipes. So this is not fake; it's authentic. <laughs> and I believe during certain years, Highlanders also carried pistols. They looked like the flintlock pistols, but more, like more Scottish looking. And then there's also those Scottish looking shields. I think they're called targes, or maybe like tar targes. Oh. I'm not really sure. It's like the round shield. It's basically like a little circle. I mean, I guess if you wanted a shield. So yeah, basically we want this big Highland warrior looking guy. You can tell he's been in the wilderness and now he's he's coming down to you know get you with his big giant sword i like how in your timeline scotland became independent and entered their own gundam fighter <laughs> <laughs> that's right that's, that's right. cool too you like to avoid beam in the the fighter tournament don't you uh, i don't know i mean i think that just the ones that i came up with i i feel like the f the physical heat versions work better i mean i feel like part of the fun is of like a big claymore it's just that the sword is like as big as the gundam and, you know, if it's just beam, I feel like if he slices through someone, it kind of loses all sense of weight, you know, like it just goes through. So I think physical would just be more fun. That's true. Yeah. You, you know, in, in Scotland or any kilt wearing culture, I guess, they, uh, they're in the buff underneath. <laughs> they're in their birthday suit underneath. So, like, I don't know. <laughs> Does this gun them, like, moon the enemy or something? <laughs> <laughs> That'll be its last resort attack. So I did actually think about that, and then I started to think, like, what what would that look like on a Gundam? Like, would it just be, like, an unpainted gray, you know, under there? Um, or would would you paint it, like, a flesh color, and, and it would, would that look really weird? Uh, you know, I don't know. Maybe they'll put, like, a cannon back there. <laughs> There's a beam cannon back there that, like, it only gets armed when the kilt gets lifted. <laughs> Does this Gundam have like a love hate relationship with whatever Gundam like England sends out? Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. I, like I sometimes agree. they're allied, sometimes they really don't get along. <laughs> well, my understanding is that the Highlanders and the Lowlanders did not necessarily see eye to eye per se. I think the Lowlanders always felt the Highlanders were maybe a little less refined. I mean, the the Lowlanders, I think they wore pants, you know, so I think they may have held that against the Highlanders. I think England would skew more towards being like the Lowlanders, so I'm sure Neo Scotland with its Highlander Gundam would maybe have some friction with Neo England for sure. Neo England always offering funds to support the development of Lowlander Gundam. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. All right, my entry now is from a country that has an interesting history because. I don't think any other country has ever acted like this country does in recent memory. This is a very special Gundam. This is Neutral Gundam from Ooh. Neo Switzerland. I like that. I tried to do something with Switzerland, actually, and I couldn't figure out what to do. So I'm actually pretty excited to hear what you're about to say. Okay. Just like Switzerland is known for its policy of essentially endless neutrality, no matter how much the Nazis have taken over Europe or anything else <laughs> or whatever's going on between communism and the United States. Um, neutral Gundam from Neo Switzerland has the power to neutralize any attack and it has a reputation for forging every battle to essentially end in a draw or no contest. Ooh, I like so, that. Yeah, beam attacks neutralized against it by whatever Swiss armor they're using. Uh, physical attacks either dodged or, you know, blocked by whatever, you know, abilities the, the pilot's been trained to use. So, countries, and I assume the protagonist in whatever year we're making this tournament, <laughs> um, has to essentially resort to using the environment to defeat the Gundam. Because I, your Gundam to this Gundam are almost always neutralized like maybe we could put like there was there was a certain situation maybe where a country did manage to actually damage it directly but it's it's exceptionally rare to the point where uh, the mobile fighter teams they essentially tell their pilots look you're probably not gonna be able to attack it you need to really look at the environment and try to use that to your advantage to hurt this gundam from a physical weapon perspective i guess the armor is just really good really dense uh basically impenetrable from a beam perspective, is this Gundam neutralizing it with some sort of EMP type weapon? Or I would say there could be something technological to it. Like maybe we could say there's 
equivalent of an eye field or something that gets broadcast or something special that a beam attack would not work. Yeah. But of course that doesn't that doesn't mean like I don't know maybe you're fighting in like a, an underground subterranean area that doesn't mean you can't use your beam sword you know in the yeah. uh, you know uh, on the stalagmites or whatever above you and then they fall. Got it. Got it. It reminds me of the end jammers from Seed. <laughs> well, those were those only stop nukes, right? I mean, yeah. Didn't they pr- prevent the reactors coming online or something? Yeah, they they had like power problems on Earth because of the end yeah. jammers. I like that. That's good. What does this look like? That's a good question. I thought it'd be very Swiss looking. So what, by that I mean like it it wouldn't look like a Swiss Army knife, but I pr- imagine a lot of red and white. But I wouldn't want it to look visually intimidating, if that makes sense. So it it have to have so almost so much of a somewhat of a neutral looking ap- appearance, but it's you know, in combat, it actually gives you a run for your money. It won't necessarily attack you, but it might make it, you're going to reach the point where you've exhausted your ammunition, your weapons are useless, your fighter's probably exhausted, and you might ask the committee for a no contest or a draw. Yeah, I was going to say, does it does it have any weapons? I wouldn't say they're offensive weapons if it has any. Like, maybe it would have some type of a baton or a pole or something. Yeah. necessarily for striking the enemy more for like redirecting where your incoming attack is going like a net and handcuffs <laughs> I think a net might be too immobilizing yeah what would what would a neutral person use and it might be more like interesting that it only uses its hands you know just like um, Shining Gundam was able to use its hands to literally attack you and hit you with a bunch of energy maybe neutral Gundam uses its hands to you know neutralize whatever you're doing well, maybe you can even grab the beam and then the beam shuts off. Ooh, this is very like unicorn ish. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I I figured Neil Switzerland, you know, would continue its tradition of neutrality in the future, but it would do it in a, a very um, Gundam way. I like it. Okay, you ready for my United States antagonist? Oh, wow. <laughs> Hit me with it. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, so this is what I thought my best idea was. But you can tell me if you if you love it or hate it. So this is called Capital Gundam or Greed Gundam. Oh, boy. <laughs> it is a transformable mobile suit with three forms. Don't ask me how the transformation works. But the default mode is a humanoid mobile suit with a big upper body in sort of a black suit, white shirt, black tie color scheme. Uh, and because of the transformation, this is going to require some bulk. So I'm thinking something like the Gundam version of Kingpin from Marvel in terms of size, shape, uh, you know, Kingpin, like, he's pretty thick, right? Fat cat. Yeah, you want, like, that the broad shoulders, I think is what I'm saying. Not necessarily fat, like, in the gut region, but, like, a, you know, he needs a wide base, I'll say. An imposing. imposing. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And I imagine because of the size, it probably stands higher, like, sits wider than other mobile suits in the tournament. And it probably needs an energy stealing ability because this is all about capitalism, right? So you're stealing other people's energy and using it against them. Uh, It doesn't have a gun or anything like that. So the two modes are the bull mode and the bear mode uh, for bull and bear markets. The bull is the the offensive mode. So just picture like the bull statue from Wall Street. And this this mode is where it would do most of its damage. It can like charge really fast, uh, but it is a bit wild. But then the bear mode, on the other hand, that's the defensive mode. So it's just as strong as the bull mode, but it, in the bear mode, it kind of like tanks all the hits, and, you know, and fights back when necessary. So it would be very hard to defeat in the in the bear mode. So there it is, Greed Gundam, based on Wall Street. You know, those those bankers, everybody hates them recently. They're my antagonist in my story because you've got the the hero, the revolutionary idealist, against you know, capitalism gone awry. <laughs> Does it like when it's draining energy from like an enemy Gundam <laughs> back at like the the enemy colony? Like, does it does the Gundam essentially go into like bankster mode or something? <laughs> back at the colony, they're like, I think someone's hacking our financial system. <laughs> they're like, I just checked. It looks like we owe multiple trillion dollar loans to Neo America. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it's it hacks their financial systems and then charges them money. And if they don't pay, it'll charge them interest. 
it, tr- it triggers a coup in whatever neo country they're <laughs> fighting and, like a new government is immediately friendly with neo america <laughs> That's pretty cool. I like how massive it is. I like how it's like it's in a suit. <laughs> <laughs> maybe when it, when we're clearly forming like a side story at this point. <laughs> um, maybe, maybe there was like a civil war in New America. Like they were fighting. You know what? What exactly would we like our our Gundam to be or something? Or oh, well, maybe not civil war to the extent that two Gundams fighting is a civil war. <laughs> but. Um, yeah, maybe they're like, all right, well, we'll make both, and then whoever wins, that's the ideology we're going with for the next four years. Yeah, totally. So kind of an election, but with fighting. <laughs> <laughs> What's interesting is that uh, it, it was quite the sinister idea coming from you, Brian. Goodness. Yeah, this is my Isaac version of New America. This is actually the second one I thought of, I think, after the Scottish one. I was thinking to myself, yeah, he's going to either have thought of this himself, or he's going to be proud of me. <laughs> I like it a lot, though, and I, I look forward to it in the side story. <laughs> <laughs> All right, my next choice, my final one, it's very much in the vein of Tequila Gundam, <laughs> so it doesn't take itself too seriously. And let me just say, I didn't mean any disrespect when I thought of this, okay? Because they are world famous for these. They're, they're, they're not even world famous. They're the best in the world for these. All right, are you ready for this, Brian? I'm ready. Stay with me now, everybody. Cigar Gundam from Neo Cuba. <laughs> so, uh, as we all know, Cuba is a, uh, it's a it's our it's a friendly neighbor to the south of America. It's in the the middle of the Caribbean. <laughs> not ex- not exactly have a a long history as being some type of global empire or anything like that. So it wisely deploys a cigar smokescreen to confuse its enemies and hide, and it uses guerrilla style tactics like the little communists did. And when enemy uh, Gundams are scanning it, it starts giving off readings that it has nukes. Oh, my God. It's, it's, <laughs> it's priming its nuclear weapons. They're being fueled. But in reality, the, the nuclear weapons it has, they can't really be used in any meaningful way. <laughs> so, it's, it's clearly for intimidation. Like, you know, I'm sure every country fighting it, like the, the little, you know, the, I don't know who would be Neil Japan's team would be like freaking out that it's actually getting ready to launch nuclear weapons in the middle of an attack or in the middle of a Gundam fight. But, you know, the nuclear weapons actually never get used or launched. <laughs> so with this Gundam is Neo Cuba just trying to hold on to its power and not necessarily get more or less, I take it. I think Neo Cube is doing a really good job. <laughs> it's, it's on the list of Gundams that you'd underestimate in combat. So what does this look like? Does it look like Fidel or does it look like Shay or, or like a mix? I'd say it would it would have a a mix of sort of tropical colors, but also maybe some of that a little bit of the uh that military green. Also some of the uh the national colors, which is like blue red and white and it would definitely have a cigar in its mouth maybe some guards also that could, could like throw or something like that to set up the smoke screen but there's always one in its mouth i like that does this have any like heat weapons like for example the the cigar you know burns hot at the end can it can it damage foes with the cigars in any way probably it could probably flick and like do some type of ash attack that like blinds oh, you or something <laughs> Yeah, I think it'd be cool if, you know, keeping with Neo Cuba kind of being um, pretty crafty. It t- it can take the cigar out of its mouth and it turns into a beam saver. <laughs> oh, nice. I like it. Yeah, like nobody would see that coming. Like, <laughs> And yeah, and then there needs to be a point where maybe it loses the cigar beam saver uh, and then it needs another one. So on its body, it, it has a, a spare box of, of more cigars and we get to see it take one out and stick it in its mouth. And the Gundam size lighter. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, did you have any honorable mentions that you didn't actually mention? I wanted to do something for America, but for the Native Americans. But I wasn't sure like which tribe to kind of go with. And I, I don't know enough about the tribes to probably do it appropriately. There's probably still something there. I mean, a Native American Gundam would probably need like a bow and arrow and probably some other native iconography i wanted to do a transformation there as well but again i didn't know like what animal would be the most appropriate i also was thinking about something for japan i was thinking maybe with something to do with samurais but i thought that might be too obvious and there are already a lot of samurai looking gundams in the sd series so i didn't want it to just be a rehash of that how about you 
All right. I had three that didn't really make it off the runway. My first one, it was actually a little bit like um, Greed Gundam. I, I called it Corruption Gundam. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the gimmick was... <sighs> I could. I never really figured it out too well, but something of it, like when the gun was around, like your team members would start, like um, I don't know, they'd be more susceptible to corruption, and then agents from the the enemy country could maybe bribe them or something while you're in combat, and <laughs> they start giving you bad advice or something. It didn't really work out, and then I also stumbled upon the fact that you know, well, which country would represent? Them? That's a little. <laughs> inappropriate and you know that's wrong to really single out one country for being corrupt since it's pretty universal to humanity yeah, <laughs> that's fair, yeah. i mean i'm sure there's i'm sure the un somehow monitors like <laughs> who is the most corrupt country in the world or something yeah. like that <laughs> sure. i don't know but, yeah, yeah who knows but um yeah at that point i was like uh, this isn't gonna work <laughs> <laughs> my next choice after that though was i thought everest gundam would be cool I just thought of this to have like the gimmick of its attack or one of its weapons is that it 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 essentially maybe it like makes the pilot feel like they're like on top of Mount Everest or it starts changing like the the oxygen um you know ratio in the fight area or <laughs> something like that. So you, you get delirious and tired faster. Was this for Neo Nepal, I assume? Yeah, well the thing is from what I understand Everest is somewhat of a, de- a de- <laughs> disputed area right because it's shared by like tibet and nepal and yeah so i thought well by depending on who i go with this would either go with neo nepal and i'm pretty sure they already have a gundam um at least in the show they did and um or neo china which would definitely not make everest their gundam since it (laughs) doesn't represent their culture or anything in any way would it look like a sherpa like would it have mountain climbing equipment I thought it would be almost a um, a giant Gundam. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it'd be very mountainous in appearance. You know, it would, it would send out storms or whatever. And like, I don't know, it would send out like a, a low oxygen field and all the pilots inside their mobile fighters would start like, you know, really getting delirious and, you know, having trouble with their oxygen levels and all that. <laughs> All your weapons and attacks are so cerebral, and like I'm over here coming up with swords. <laughs> and my final one that, boy, was it a challenge thinking of what it could be. I never really thought of anything that it could be, actually, because like at first I thought, okay, missiles, but I was like, missiles aren't really unique enough to be like a special attack for a Gundam. I was thinking, what would North Korea send in a Gundam tournament? Ooh, well, the thing that pops into my head immediately is just like a Gundam version of Kim Jong Il. <laughs> yeah, I was like, would they call it like Dear Leader Gundam or something <laughs> like that? I don't know, or like Dear Gundam, I don't know, or Dear Great Warrior Gundam, Korean Workers Party Gundam, I don't know. And then I was like, oh, Juche Gundam, like because that's like their political philosophy, like self reliance mm-hmm. or something. And I was like, this still, this isn't really working because I'm like. I, I I don't I think only a North Korean would be able to determine what a North Korean Gundam would would actually look like and you know make it unique, you know. For all I know, they'll call it I don't know, some kind of flower Gundam, whatever flower grows there or something like that because it's important to their culture. But I, I really couldn't think of anything. I thought it was just it's such a mystery. Like what would North Korea send? Comment below. <laughs> what would North Korea? What would Neo North Korea send in a mobile fighter tournament? <laughs> There's no right answer, and there's no wrong answer, I guess. If you're somehow listening to this from North Korea, we would really love to know what you think your mobile fighter should look like. Yeah. I thought nuclear weapons, too, and then I was like, well, by that logic, like, Neo-Russia and Neo-America should have nothing but nuclear gun. (laughs) Plus, if if Neo-North Korea use a nuke, I'm sure all the other countries of the world would not take too kindly to that, and they might all gang up on Neo-North Korea, and it could end very poorly for them. Maybe that happens in our side story. <laughs> Maybe that explains exactly why there's no Neo North Korea. <laughs> uh, well, everybody, I hope you enjoyed our mobile fighter ideas. I don't know about you, Isaac, but I'm really interested to hear what the listeners come up with for their own mobile fighter ideas, whether it's for their country or other countries, doesn't matter. So please leave us a comment on YouTube or on Twitter at Colony Dropcast. What would your mobile fighter be? What's it themed after? What does it look like? You know, weapons, attacks, 
uh, you know, give us the whole rundown. Don't forget, it doesn't necessarily have to be a country, right? Maybe you'll make up a country. I don't know. Maybe California seceded in your timeline and became Neo California or something. <laughs> they send out Surf Gundam. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, anything can happen in the timeline. I mean, Isaac made Neo Hawaii a country, right? So send it in. Let us know. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. We'll see you next week. Take care, everybody. Thank you.